Hi everyone, this is Andrew at Plainview Farm. In today's video, I'm gonna to try to answer a couple questions. Number one being, what is a grazing system? And number two, why do I need one? Well, put simply, a grazing system is basically cross fences uh, in a plan, a managed plan, I guess, on how you are going to best implement the forage that you have available on your farm. Number two, why do I need one? Well, the simple answer to that is one word, efficiency. So I'm gonna share a few numbers with you here. Number one, in a continuous grazing system where there are no separate paddocks, there's no rotation offered at all to the livestock, the animals only utilize about 30%, again on average, 30% of the available forage. The rest of it, they trample under their feet after they pick what they want. The good forage is usually gonna be overgrazed and the weeds are gonna be allowed to run wild and grow as they please. Now this can also lead to nutritional issues uh, with your livestock as well because the animals are able to go through and basically hit the dessert bar at the buffet every time they go out to find something to eat and they leave some of the more nutritional things behind. Now there are studies out there that show that as you subdivide your pastures, they become more and more efficient because by crowding all of the animals in together, you are requiring them to utilize more and more of the forage that's available. If you divide your continuous grazing system into 12 or more paddocks, you can at least double the grazing efficiency of your pasture. Now one might argue that just a little bit of grazing management is basically the same thing as doubling the size of your farm without even having to buy any land. So I also wanna point this out as well. Grazing management is scalable. Whether you're running 500 head of cattle or five head of cattle, you'll see the same kind of improvement in your pasture utilization rate. Now, if you're thinking that, well, building fence is expensive, especially the way prices are right now, Hold on to that thought because I'm gonna to try to address it later on in the video. So if you are interested in utilizing more of your pasture through a grazing management system, I'm gonna talk about some things that you need to consider and also gonna talk about what I'm doing here on my farm as well. For those of you that are new to the channel, my farm is only 20 acres. Like I said, this is a scalable uh, system. This is something that anybody can do regardless of size. So the first thing that you need to consider is water. On any farm, water is always key. Water is very important because you have to have water and you have to have it available relatively easy if you're going to graze with animals, if you're going to plant crops, whatever you're gonna do, you have to have water available. So you have to consider where is the location of the water on your property. Now, for me, I have two ponds in the pasture here just behind me. This is roughly 14, 15 acres directly behind me, and this is what I'm gonna be dividing up into a grazing system. As I said, I've got two ponds out here. Uh, both of them are in kind of rough shape. One I've just recently cleaned out and that is the pond on the far end of the property. The other one is in need of being cleaned out. We just haven't got to that yet. Now I also have available water next to the house, which is on the very north end of this 15 acres. And I have a hydrant, well, the well is actually located up here right behind the house. So I'm able to run water out to the cattle in this area of the property. But if you don't have water that's easy to access, you definitely need to think about how you can make sure that the animals have access to water without having to travel too far. There are studies that say that cattle especially, if they have to travel more than 800 feet to get to water, that they begin to underutilize the forage that's available. Anything beyond that 800 feet is not going to be utilized as well. So like I said, I've got my pastures laid out uh, here in my plan where the animals, they're definitely not gonna have to travel more than 800 feet in order to get to water. So if you have maybe only one source of water uh, on your property that is you know, readily available, uh, whether it is a well or a pond, Something that you can do is, especially if you have a well or access to public water, you can buy the, uh, the big black plastic, the large rolls of black plastic um, 
piping. It's very easy to, to use, it's flexible, you can just run it wherever you need to. Uh, one of the best things that you can do with that stuff is run it right on top of the ground, that way you don't have the expense of burying it, and you add in a few hose bibs here and there to give yourself access with a water hose to fill up water tanks and those kinds of things in order to make sure that your animals have plenty of access to water. Now, of course, whenever the grazing season is over and freezing weather becomes a concern, well, then you, you definitely need to drain the system out and to clean it all out, which, you know, you can buy... Uh, you can buy one of those fittings to put on it that are popular for RVs where you just hook up a, an airline and just blow all the water out of it. That way you don't have any freezing and breaking issues. And of course, if you only have standing water such as in a pond or even a stream, things that you can do there is pump the water out of them. Again, if you don't have a well or public water, you can use a submersible pump or even a bilge pump connected to a car battery. Now the next thing that you need to consider in a grazing management system is paddock size, okay? And also shape as well. Animals seem to perform the best whenever the shape is squarish. Of course, that's not always possible because again, you need to consider how the land lays and you know, including certain forage types together, that kind of stuff. Now, as far as size goes, I don't necessarily mean exactly, you know, five, 10 acre paddocks, two acres, whatever it may be, depending on your size. What I'm talking about is carrying capacity. Again, you wanna be able to try to move the animals through in a somewhat uniform process. You don't want one paddock that takes 10 days to clear and another paddock that takes two days to clear, even though they're both five acres. In the five acre paddock that takes 10 days to graze, there's gonna be a whole lot more forage trampled underfoot. So again, you get back into the issue of underutilization of forage. So again, whenever I'm talking about paddock size, I'm talking about carrying capacity. You have the same number of grazing days from one to the next. And I'll be honest with you, whenever it comes to figuring out grazing days, that's one of those things that is best learned on the ground, out there actually spending time in the pasture with the animals and figuring out how they utilize the forage that's available, how long it takes them to graze off a certain area. There are sources available that show you how to calculate that. Um, there are grazing sticks you can walk out through and measure the forage, get an idea about how's, how much is out there. But in my experience, uh, those are great tools, but the best way to figure out how long it's gonna take to graze off a paddock is by actually spending time out there with the animals and watching how they utilize the forage. But again, size and shape, it doesn't have to be perfect. Always consider the way the land lays. Try to follow those natural lines and barriers as best you can. Now, one thing I wanna to add to this before I forget, you need to plan a way to move the animals efficiently throughout the grazing system. Now for me, I'm putting in a central alleyway that runs right down the center of this 15 acres, and I'm going to have uh, gates for them to move in and out. There will be two gates in every paddock so that I can then subdivide it further, but the gates are going to be electric fence double uh, wire gates. Not anything fancy. Again, I'm going to touch on that in just a little bit. I'm a big proponent of high tensile electric. So like I said, I'll touch on that in just a few moments. But having those wire gates again allows me to move the animals from any one specific paddock to any other paddock via the use of that central alleyway that will run right down the center of the property. Now the alleyway is going to be 16 feet wide and the openings to get into the alleyway, at least one in each paddock is going to be 24 feet. That way I can turn easily with a trailer or equipment, whatever I need to, to get in and out of those paddocks. So the next consideration to keep in mind is whether you want your system to be permanent or flexible or even a hybrid of the two. Now in a permanent grazing system, you go out, nothing ever changes, everything is fixed, there is nothing that moves, it's all permanent in place. Uh, you may use woven wire, you may use barbed wire, whatever it may be, fence that is there to stay. 
And it's quite possible that your gates are going to be like this one right here, a gate that is hung on a post and you know allows the animals to move in and out um, by opening the gate like you would normal, normally open a gate. Now you don't have to be that aggressive in your fence building. You, you can also be as laid back as you want, um, meaning that there is no permanent infrastructure. You can also use poly wire on a reel and tread in posts uh, like this reel right here and not have any permanent infrastructure at all. Just divide the pastures as you work your way through it and not worry about the rest of the stuff. So now my system is going to be a temporary fixed system that allows for flexibility, if that makes sense. Let me explain what I mean here. So my corner posts are all wooden posts. Uh, they're going to be fixed, okay? Whenever I set them in the ground, they're gonna stay there at least until they rot out. All of my wooden corner posts are reclaimed utility poles that I was able to pick up for free. Uh, I don't know how long they're gonna last, but again, at the end of the day, they were free. Now I'm not going to be bracing these posts because I'm only using two strands of 14 gauge high tensile electric, which does not require a whole lot of support. Those posts set at about 30 to 36 inches in the ground are plenty to keep those, those wires up. Now, as for my line posts, I'm using 3 8 inch uh, fiberglass rods that are common in flexible systems. That, those are actually the ones that I prefer to use with my reels of poly wire. So using this type of system allows me to pull everything out relatively quickly if I need to. Let's say that I want to renovate a pasture and I'm going to plow it all under and start over. I can pull in all of my wire and all of my line posts and leave nothing but the corner posts in place and just hit the whole place with a plow and a disc and cedar and all of that and not have to worry about having to work my way through one pasture or another and that kind of thing. I, it also allows me to move things around if I discover that, well, you know, maybe the system isn't working out exactly the way that I wanted and I want to tweak it just a little bit. And of course, I can then subdivide as well uh, with the rolls of poly wire and the step-in posts. Now, I'll tell you this, the cost of the system that I'm putting in, I've actually already got everything purchased and I'm ready to start working on it, is relatively minimal, but again, I'm gonna touch on that in just a few moments. Now, the next thing is whenever it comes to laying out the system, uh, there are some great resources available. The first of which I'll mention is simply Google Maps. You can go onto Google Maps and on the bottom left hand of the uh, screen, there should be the little satellite button or icon you can select and it'll give you an aerial satellite image of the area that you're looking at on the map. So I go in there, I look at my farm and I get an idea of where everything is. It gives you a bird's eye view basically is, is what you're getting. Another great tool that's available on Google Maps is you can right click on the mouse and then you can measure distances based on how far you know you're zoomed in you can get an idea of what distances are what measurements are what sizes are whenever you're trying to figure out where you want things to be now another great resource specifically one that i took advantage of that's available to me is i went to my local county office and i got a free map a free aerial map of my property the map that i got was a 150 to one inch scale and they gave me a a map printed out on a legal size uh, piece of paper and I was able to kind of lay some stuff out that way. Now here where I live uh, in Missouri uh, again that was free to me through my county assessor's office in your county the story may be different um, I'm sure it varies from one jurisdiction to the next but again that resource that is a resource that was available here where I'm at and I'm guessing it's quite possibly available in many other places as well. So one of the things that I did with that map that I got from my local assessor's office was I laminated it so I could use dry erase markers and actually draw on it 
to get an idea of where I wanted to put things. I'm a very visual person, and so it helps to be able to have those kind of resources. And again, to get an idea of where I want to put the central alleyway, how I want to divide my pastures up based on the way everything is, water access, all of that. And again, with a ruler, I'm able to lay that on the map and get an idea of roughly where things actually do fall. Then once I kind of got an idea of where I wanted to put everything, I got a measuring wheel and I went out into the pasture and started laying things out based on where I kind of estimated it from the aerial map. Again, like I said, I'm a visual person and this helps me. I understand there are folks out there, they have absolutely no trouble uh, just looking across a field and saying, oh yeah, that's about 500 feet or whatever it may be. I'm not that kind of person. I need to I need to have some sort of marker, some sort of representation. So again, I took a measuring wheel out into the pasture and a can of utility marker paint, and I started putting some lines on the ground where I wanted to put my corner posts, where I wanted to divide the pastures possibly. I went through and I even made feet markers. Every 100 feet I would measure off and put a marker on the ground to tell me roughly how much space there was from one paddock to the next to get an idea as far as sizing goes. And that also helps me to estimate how much wire I'm going to need, how many posts, all of those kinds of things. Now whenever I went out on the field with that wheel and the can of utility marker, the first thing I did was figure out where I was going to put my central alleyway and measured off of one fence in order to keep things roughly in line and straight. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. There's more than one way to do things. This is just my process. And of course, the last thing to consider is cost. Like I said, there's a lot of folks that are probably thinking to themselves, building fence isn't cheap. Well, let me break down what I've got here. Like I said, my corner posts are free. I went around to my neighbors and, and picked up old utility poles as the utility company went through this spring and replaced poles. And I was able to get all of those corner posts for free. There's roughly 22 of them here in my system is, is what I've got planned. I use 3 8 inch fiberglass rods for my line posts. Uh, and those use just stainless steel clips to hold the wire in place. I've got end line insulators, uh, I've got strainers, I have gate handles involved, and of course, you know, I, which one of the things I like to use to make my connections is uh, cable clamps, because you can buy those in bulk relatively cheap. So for all of those things, not including, again, labor and tractor fuel, which the tractor fuel was, I think, 40 bucks maybe, not including labor and tractor fuel, I've got right at $700 to divide this 15 acres into six separate paddocks. So if you do the math on that, it's roughly $50 an acre to double the utilization of the forage on my farm, which is essentially doubling the size of my farm. Now, if you ask me, $50 an acre, that's pretty cheap land. So as always, I hope you found this video to be useful. If you did, do me a favor and hit that like button so other folks can find it. And if you have not yet, please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.